The way to put this runner together is first you want to lay out all of your applique blocks and your sewn blocks so you get an idea of where they need to go and the pattern has them with the joy to the world blocks on either end then the angels mary joseph and the baby manger block before you start in you're going to want to take your end blocks and sew them to each of the joy to the world blocks so i'm just going to pin them so that I know that these need to be sewn on the ends before we can add in anything else. When you sew these, if you look at the back of the block, so I've trimmed away the batting and the stabilizer. These blocks are digitized so that the corner of each block in the outer stitching line matches up with the corner of another one. So I'm going to put my pin in on the corner stitching and I'm going to pin it directly into the corner here. You want to put the pin horizontal, okay? Don't worry if your edges are not perfectly even. So long as that pin is horizontal, then take another pin and go in one side of that stitch line and out the other to anchor that together. And then you can take your pin off and do the same thing over here. Go in the corner of the stitching and go in the other corner where it needs to match to get that horizontal and then take a pin and go in one side of the stitch line and out the other and then you can remove that pin. You may also want to do that once you have the corners matched up you might want to do it in the middle. Go right in on the stitch line and then horizontal put it over to the next stitch line and pin it. Go in one side of the stitching line and out the other and when you sew, you're going to sew one stitch inside of this outer stitch line. So I'm going to sew it this direction, right there, and I'm going to just stitch it all on the inside. Because you have matched up the corners and the middle, as you stitch, you're going to enclose that stitch line into the seam allowance and when you open it up, you won't see that stitch line and everything should match up just perfect. So that's how I'm going to sew mine together. Once you have them all sewn together, you go ahead and press those seams open to reduce bulk. And you should not be able to see that stitching line while they went together. So I'm going to do the entire uh, center strip like that with all the applique blocks. And then I will do that to the ends of these blocks, end to end. Again, like, look, if I put these together and tried to sew them, they're not even trimmed the same. You can see the, the one behind it. But if you match up the corners, that'll stitch together perfectly and then be sure to press your seams open to reduce bulk. So I'm going to do the center row first and then I'm going to put together the bottom strip and the top strip and then I will sew the top strip to the top of these blocks and the bottom strip to the bottom of these blocks and we'll be ready to put the backing on. I got the top border on just fine I had a little bit more border than I had um, lengthwise on the panels and so I used a pressing ham to uh, use the concept of ease so that the, the shorter panels went over the pressing ham and then the, the top layer was put over. It's just like adding a sleeve cap onto a garment. So 
I was able to use the, the diameter of the pressing ham allowed me to be able to get this to fit. And then I made sure to sew with this piece to the bottom so that the feed dogs could ease in any of the excess. Now, this piece is much bigger than, um, now on the top, it looks like it's gonna fit. It maybe has an extra half an inch from end to end. But when I put it on the bottom, and these things happen, when I put it on the bottom, I've got a lot of extra. So I have like almost an inch over here and a half an inch over here. And this is just not going to fit. So visually, what, I've, what I'm looking at is you're looking for balance, okay? And what I see on this, I'm kind of looking at this seam line up here where these two pieces meet, and I want it, it and it really doesn't matter out here on the ends so much, but you, the ones in the middle need to really, they need to balance. And I'm looking here and I'm looking here. I mean, you just think about walking by this thing and looking at it. You don't want it to look off. You don't want the stars so that you've got one here that where this is almost lined up with this seam and you come down and it completely misses it. It looks off balance and it looks wonky. So you've got to kind of look at this and get it so that I want this seam to pretty much match up right here. And then this seam... It looks like it's way off. Why? I have no clue. But what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to go ahead and sew these again. Like this one looks like it's on pretty good, but it's a little farther over this way. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead in here and stitch. I'm just going to run another stitch right here like a eighth of an inch in from the current stitch. Just gonna bring that in, okay? And I'm gonna continue to do that on all of these. I'm going to stitch them an additional eighth, maybe even here, it might be uh, between an eighth and a quarter, three sixteenths, I might go ahead and stitch that a little thicker. And then this one for sure. And as I bring in these stitches on in here, that's going to draw this in that I'm gonna be able to go ahead and get this on with no problem. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so I've sewn these all in an additional eighth of an inch. There's just another line of stitching right there. And I'm not gonna unpick the other ones. I'm just gonna see how this works. And all right, we're getting closer here. Now I've gotten to the point where I can probably get this to fit by using the feed dogs and easing in everything. If you don't have a pressing ham, you can use your knee to, to um, put, you know, put the, the panels over and, and then put this on top and try to get it to fit. But this is how this works. See, you can get everything to fit as it goes over that uh, curve right there. So just like before, I'm going to match the corners. I'm going to put a pin in the corner, put a pin in the corner, like that. Get, get that pin so it's straight. And I'm going to anchor this right there and then I'm going to do the other corner but that worked a lot better to get that straight you know everything it's not an exact science you're going to hear me say that over and over especially when we get to where we're doing the mitering on the backing and binding but I want to get these uh, corners so that they are on now when I um, go to pull this See, I may not need this. Let's see. Yeah, that looks like that's going to fit. We got a little bit of extra right here. See this? And a little bit of extra right here. So if I put this under here, that extra flattens out. If I try to line up these two seams with these two seams, 
I get a big old hump here in the middle. Watch. So if I do this, that looks right there. So I'm going to put this in right here through that stitch line and right here. Get those even. Okay. And then if I put this one, I mean, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not going to use a ruler and try to make it exact because I might make myself crazy. I'll put this in straight down on the seam line so that these marry up. There, that looks pretty good. So again, I will sew this with the border side down because the border is larger than the, than the individual panels for some reason. I don't know why, but it happens. So you just have to learn how to fudge these a little bit and fix it. And you want to put your little ends of your pins to the outside out here because I'm pinning with this on top, unless you can pin it upside down. And I'm pinning on top, but I'm going to want to pull the pins before my needle gets to it. So again, when I sew this, I'm going to be sewing with a technique that I've talked about before. It's called thumb under and finger on top. And that is going to help me to move these pieces at the at a, a rate that everything's going to fit pretty good. Upside down with this. I got my little seam allowance. I'm stuck right there. I've got some extra over the outside. I don't care. I might, I'll trim that off. But I am going to pin this in the top so that it's level and it's not pointing out, flapping out like it wanted to. Okay. I'm going to sew with the needle just inside of that seam line right there. That stitch line. So this is that sewing method I learned from Janet Prey of Islander Sewing Systems. Thumb under, okay, thumb under, fingers on top, and then turn it like that. And that's going to keep everything so that it's nice and taut. You give just a little bit of resistance, not a lot. You know what? I didn't put one right here. I need to do that. I need to put this right here. All right, thumb under, fingers on top. I'm going to hold it in the back, and I'm going to guide it, give it some tension. Ouch. Under, fingers on top, turn it and pull. That's what they do. Her mother used to work in the garment industry and in the garment industry they don't have time for pinning and that is how they get everything made without using pins. I think that worked out really, really good. Yep, that did. Look at that. That turned out great. I like it very much. So I'm going to go iron it, and I'm going to iron the uh, ends in. And then right here, where the blue comes over from the panels, I'm going to cut two, but not through the seam line so that it will lay flat like that without all the bulk. I'll show you. Okay, so just on an initial look, you can see it fits just fine. And I cannot see the stitch line. It all got captured in the seam allowance. So I was able to take something where I had an extra inch over here on this far end, or actually on this end, and now it turned out just even perfect. I've got a little bit extra right here I'm going to trim. You won't notice it. But this way... 
it fits and it also has the visual line that these are even right here. It looks fine. Is it perfect mathematically? Nope, don't care. So right here where I have uh, got this, I'm going to trim uh, two but not through the stitch line on this on every one of these just to be able to give it some uh, room so that it will lay nice and flat. If you don't do this, you'll get bulky bumps. If you accidentally cut through and you make a hole, you need to patch it on the back with some iron-ons, uh, either interfacing or stabilizer, and use some fabric glue and tuck it. And when I do this, now it's gonna wanna lay flatter, see that? Okay, so now just open these up, press it out with your fingers first, and then give it some steam, and use a clapper. Very good. So I'm going to go down. I didn't, you notice I did not even iron it from the front yet. You want to iron it from the back first and really get in there. You might use a seam roller if you have one. I've got one here somewhere. If you don't have the hand strength, you might want to use a seam roller. Pull those seams apart. If you iron it from the front first, you uh, run the risk of not getting that seam completely open and flat. This is all going to be inside, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. You just want to get it as flat as possible. I get asked all the time, this is the Sapporo 527 Gravity Fed Iron. I've had it now, gosh, six years. I think I got it at the show back in 2014. I use it every day, all day long. It stays on, and the flamingo up above it is holding a uh, one-gallon distilled water. I don't use the minerals that they say to use. I like it because it stays on. It doesn't have the auto off. This is used usually by professional seamstresses. I bought it during my garment making days. This looks good. See how flat that's laying? That looks great. Over here uh, with Mary and Joseph, you've got some heavy satin stitch lines from the bottom of their robes. You may want to do a test first and make sure that your iron is not going to melt your uh, stabilizer. I've seen that happen. Get your stabilizer out and put, you know, hold your iron above it and shoot it with some steam and see if it shrivels up. If it does, you might want to use a press cloth. This looks great. This looks really, really good. If you don't have a clapper, my husband made this one for me. I'm trying to get my son to make some and put them on our store site. If you don't have a clapper, go raid your grandchildren's uh, wooden blocks. You need untreated wood. No chemicals on it. There we go. That looks good. See, I haven't even flipped it over. All right, let's take a look. Oh, yeah. How about that? That's gorgeous. That looks just fine. See that? When you line up the... Um, the, the corners of these panels as you pin them together, the end result is those, those lines that were the little straight line motif stitching, they all line up on each panel because it's the same design. I know, I got a little crooked here and there, but that's okay. And it is ready to get a backing on it. I don't like table runners that are too puffy because if you put something on them and they wobble, then your thing wobbles, whatever you've got on it. This looks great. Very nice. All right. I love it. It's ready for a backing. Didn't that come out beautiful? Oh, I love it. I am going to take my rotary cutter now and trim my outside edges to one quarter inch so that there's a one quarter inch seam allowance between the outside stitch line and the edge of the fabric. All right, I've done a rough cut of the backing all around the uh, table runner and I have trimmed from the outside seam line so I tried to trim a quarter of an inch and it didn't always work so I went for a visual straight essentially like squaring up the table runner even if 
it's not exactly straight according to the edges of the fabric. And you can see I got a little ripple down here. That's okay. So now I am going to take the ruler and I'm going to correctly trim an inch and a quarter all around the outside of this. This is the way I'm doing it. You guys can put your backing on and bind it the old fashioned way, whatever you like. Either way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it to an inch and a quarter. I'm going to fold that in half and fold it up. That's what I'm going to do. And if it's correct, then the quarter inch that folds up will cover this outside stitch line. If it's not correct, I'm going to be maneuvering the fabric so that visually it looks correct. If this outside seam line is less than a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric, that's okay. You can fatten the edge of the binding just a little bit in the fold. If it's farther than a quarter inch away, you're gonna have to kind of maneuver a little bit, but you run the risk of having a hump in the fold. So aim for a quarter of an inch thereabouts. All right. But the idea is to get to within, your backing will be one and a quarter inches all the way around. I do not have any other. So I'm going to use a line here to make sure I'm fairly square. And I'm going to go an inch and a quarter from the outside edge of the fabric. This is not an exact science in any way. I wish it was, but the nature of what we're doing, it just doesn't happen. And I am making sure I've got a 90 degree. This is straight right here. This is how you're gonna square it up, even if your sides are not straight. I'm gonna put a dark line on a seam line right here. That works. This seam line is straight and this seam line is straight. Yep. This is how I'm gonna, that looks good. This process will help you kind of square up your runner. All right, I am going to put some pins in it because I'm getting ready to turn it. And I don't want to mess up what I've already done. quarter inches again. You can do one and a half. I don't like mine quite that wide. One and a quarter seems to work just fine for me. So essentially I've used the backing to square up the runner. I squared up the runner pretty close, but the backing makes it even better. Okay, now we're going to go over to the ironing station and I am going to uh, fold in and fold in again, and then what we're gonna do is visually try to keep the amount, the fold that is on top of the table runner even from one end to the other. So that's gonna keep it kind of straight for us. This is where your fudge factor comes in. Some people don't like it, but you know, it is what it is. I will be using Steam Seam 2 and I will be using that to essentially glue the binding onto the top so that it stays put. And when I go to miter my corners, that will stay put until they get sewn. I'm going to fold up, essentially it's half an inch is what you're folding. And I'm just gonna fold that and press it all along. And ideally, your fold is gonna cover your outside stitch line here, regardless of how close it is to the edge. Okay. 
I'm just going to set this on right underneath the outside stitch line. I'm just going to put it right on the edge. This stuff gets an attitude when it gets cool and it doesn't, um, this is Steam Seam too. I've got it in my Amazon store, quarter inch. If you don't have this uh, quarter inch, or maybe you have it in a sheet of like eight and a half by 11 or something like that, just cut them with your uh, rotary cutter and cut it to the size you need. And that'll work fine. Okay, that looks good. That looks real good. All right, so I'm gonna start up here on this end and I'm gonna heat it up and then I'm gonna pull the paper, keeping the gluey part down. And like I said, it pulls, and I'm kind of pulling it away at an angle. Oh, come on, stay on there. Yeah. I've never had any luck putting it on cold and peeling the backing off and having the sticky part stay on the fabric. That's never worked out for me. So now <laughs> I'm just going to fold this over and I'm going to fold it so I make sure it doesn't matter how deep you fold it in. You just need to make sure that the amount it's folded in is the same all the way down the side. And that's going to give a visual that it's not wonky. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm kind of getting like an eighth of an inch below the large lower star. So that it looks the same all the way down. That looks good. Yeah. Look at that. A little bit wide here. I'm okay with it. Okay, that looks good. See that? That's fine. I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm not stitching in the ditch or anything. It, to me, it's not big enough for that. You can if you want. I'm not. It needed another four minutes or so. I'm making a pineapple upside down cake. I like those because you don't have to frost them. <laughs> Let me try it the way the directions say. Well, there we go. That is working. Okay. Made a liar out of me. All right. I'm going to fold this up so that it's the same distance away from the lower star as on the other side. Okay, the trick to getting these right, where you don't drive yourself absolutely crazy, is to fold the fabric first where you think you want it to be and then fiddle with the miter corner until it is what you want. So I'm gonna fold in the center and then fold it up and that's about how wide I want it. So that I can figure out exactly where I want it to be evenly here. It doesn't matter that it's uneven, you can tuck the extra fabric up inside of the fold. So I'm pretty happy with that width right there. So you want to get the center first. 
and I'm good with that. I think that looks just fine and it's about even. So I'm going to go ahead and tack down the center. I'm going to pull about four or five inches off of the steam seam. I'm going to put it in the center and get my middle exactly where I want it and leave the edges. So I've established the width of the binding here. Okay. On the corners, you can use a 45 template. You can certainly f put that there, fold it like you like it, and then make sure that that stays exactly as you want it. Okay. And then you kind of have to, f I'm sorry my hand's in the way, but you have to fiddle with it until the fabric is the right width and your 45 is right. That looks pretty good. That's acceptable. That looks pretty good. That looks real good. So I'm going to put a pin in here, stick it into my ironing station and steam it so it doesn't forget where it's supposed to be. I'm going to use another little piece of steam seam. Don't take it all the way out to the edge. You want to take it just to the inside of the white part there. Very, very good. That'll work. Okay. So that one's done. So now I am going to change out my thread to the same color, like a deep navy blue for the top and blue for the bobbin. And I am going to stitch an eighth of an inch around all the way around this. Who wants to play some bobbin chicken? <laughs> Let's see how we do. So it doesn't really matter where I start. I'm going to start on the side just like usual with a quilt. And I am going to stitch this so that the inside toe of this of the center of this part of the foot stays right on the edge of the blue. Thumb under, finger on top, just like before. And here it is. It is all finished. I'm pretty happy with it. Again, not an exact science, but I think it turned out just great. I hope you enjoyed doing this as much as I did. All right, that's it. You guys go sew something. Bye.